Greetings fanboys and fangirls, Jared here with another review from Fanboys Forever. Today we're going to be having a look at two of the brand new basic figures from the new Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins movie. And the jury's still out on the movie because at the time of recording it has not come out yet. It is interesting that they've chosen to do these because these are definitely not the classified series. Uh, these are definitely much more uh, basic in style and basic in articulation as well, but we'll see uh, when we get these things open. Of course, you can see that we have Snake Eyes here, and he has some, uh, looks like some action features. And then over here, we've got Storm Shadow, and he too appears to have some action features, very basic kind of twist at the waist sort of things. Uh, it looks like the prototypes, the renders on the back are a little sharper than the actual figures. Uh, the actual figures though, I, I like the look of these pretty well, but let's go ahead and crack these open and see what we've got. Um, just in case anybody is wondering, this is the UPC code for Snake Eyes, and this is the UPC code for Storm Shadow. So let's get right into it. And here we have Snake Eyes from the new movie line. In the background, you can see that I've got the six inch version classified and the three and three quarters version, and the same thing with Storm Shadow. So let's go ahead and have a look at all the details on the figure. Starting with all of the kind of more intricate sculpting details, uh, you can see that there's actually a lot of really cool stuff here. Lots of good texturing on the bodysuit and the armor. Uh, on the head sculpt as well. And it everything does appear to be fairly movie accurate from everything that we've seen now that we have trailers out and everything. I particularly like the kind of sculpted uh, end texture right up there above the visor. I think that's really nice. And back here, we have the same kind of thing going on. On the back, we have some almost vents. I'll remove the sword so you can see that we kind of have a harness. More of that texture that I was talking about. Going on down to the boots. There's just a lot of good stuff going on here sculpt-wise, and really they put in far more than they even probably had to for a kid's line. So I'm really satisfied with the actual sculpt detail. Uh, the same can be said for the weapons. There's some really nice sculpting on the uh, scabbard for the sword here. Even taking the blade out, there's some uh, really nice lines sculpted in there. And it just, there's lots of just little details, even the handle. So honestly, I am quite impressed really with what the basic team were able to accomplish at Hasbro. I do think that this is definitely a quality sculpt. So um, good for them. In terms of paint, there's not very much going on here, obviously, just by the looks of him. Um, you can see that really his head is just one piece of black plastic. That's it. The only real paint applications we get are silver for the belt buckle and the buckle on the gear. Uh, we get some gray hits around the costume on top of black plastic and the Rashikage symbol on the bicep, which is much more prominent than it is in the film. So that's kind of it. The sword does get a gold a hit of paint there right around the hilt. So that's kind of all there is. Um, I think that these are okay. They're probably not exactly accurate to the film, though. I do feel like the gray highlights have kind of been overemphasized, if you catch my meaning. I do think that the visor needed some kind of gloss or something to make it stand out. I think that's the real weakness here and to be film accurate. Other than that, I think it looks pretty good and uh, I'm glad that there is some variation in paint work around the figure. It does help it stand out a little more than it could have. So let's go ahead and look at the articulation. In some ways, the articulation is more than what I would have hoped for, and in some ways, it's exactly what I thought it would be. So let's start with the head. Uh, it goes, does go left and right, and I thought that would be all that it does, but it actually does have a little bit of up and down. Not very much. This is how far it can go down. This is how far it can go up. So it's not too bad, but you're definitely not going to get him looking up too much. So moving on to the shoulders, we do have hinges in those, and they hinge pretty far up. So he can definitely do more than just a basic T-pose. He can go all the way around. At the elbow, we have a swivel, and he does have an elbow joint that's pretty deep, so you can get a little bit more than 90 degrees. There is nothing, though, at the wrist, so that's unfortunate. He doesn't have anything in the abdomen, but he does have a waist swivel that's courtesy of an action feature. So we'll get into the action feature later, but you can't swivel it around this way, only this way, because of the action feature. Down here at the hips, we do have kind of a splits motion, and I actually think this is really good for a basic figure. Uh, that's great, and it kind of beats some collector's uh, figures that we get. It has a splits action. We also have a swivel here at the knee, 
we even have a 90 degree single knee joint, but unfortunately nothing here at the ankles, so it's just a solid sculpt. That does limit some of your posing options, as if you try to get him to stand in certain poses, it's just not going to work, but that's okay. But really overall, he does everything he needs to do and a few things that he doesn't even have to do. So this is pretty good for a basic figure. However, without ankle and wrist joints, it does kind of hurt the proceedings quite a bit. In terms of accessories, things are okay. We do get this removable scabbard. And you can see that there's lots of good detail on here, including some really nice texturing on the scabbard, if you look. We also get uh, the sword. So I do think they paid a lot of attention to this particular accessory, as we know the sword will be very significant in the film. This is where the wrist articulation, though, really hurts proceedings, because you can't, you know, as much as you want to, you're trying to turn that wrist to get different poses and you just can't. However, the bicep swivel does aid in quite a bit of that, allowing you to kind of go side to side and do different things. And once you use the shoulder in conjunction with that, you can get quite a bit of range there. So that is at least acceptable for their solution to that problem, I suppose. As for other accessories, Snake Eyes comes with two of these kind of like cleavers, almost like something you would see a cartoon chef use. Uh, so I really love the sculpting on these though. And it kind of makes me wonder if uh, a version of this will be in the film. You can almost see kind of like some dragons uh, sculpted into these. It's really very impressive. I have never really exactly seen accessories quite like these uh, that's been offered by Hasbro before. So this is really intricate. Could you imagine how these would look if someone took like say a black wash and put over them to bring out some of those sculpted details? That would be unbelievable. But as we are discussing this figure, one thing we should continually keep in mind is that these are $10 more uh, kid-aimed figures. So I think you're getting a pretty good value for money here. He can hold these very, very well, and you can get some cool poses with him. So I'll be curious to see if these are in the film. By far the most basic and bland accessory he comes with are these nunchucks, and I just don't like them very much. You can remove these if you wish, and they kind of come through this little separation there and it just has a big metal bar and it just doesn't seem very eloquent. So the one cool thing about these nunchucks is that you can combine them with the knives. So there's these holes at the top here and you just stick these in. And once you have those in, here it is. So it kind of creates this more lethal looking weapon uh, where you have knives flying all over the place. I think this is pretty neat. It's a cool way to play with it. Uh, these are a very tight fit. I don't really see, um, it's funny, I was at first putting them in and I had to double check the back of the packaging to make absolutely sure this is what they were wanting me to do because it kind of just felt like it was just going to warp them out. So this is pretty neat, I guess, um, but it's just a little extra something you can do. And here he is with the nunchucks. You can have him hold it with both hands, but these are kind of hard to get in the hands because they're uh, kind of big. So you can use the action feature at the waist and he kind of hits himself with his nunchucks, but this might work pretty well if you were having him go up against Storm Shadow, so I like that pretty well. And speaking of the action feature, you just put the sword in his hand, and you turn the waist, and there he goes. Of course, Snake Eyes may want to see a doctor with how far he is able to turn that waist. And since Pixel Dan copyrighted its comparison time, I will now be using a different phrase, so here we go. You ready for this? It's much better than his. It's compare with other toys time. All right, so here we have uh, the classified version of Snake Eyes. I do not have the movie classified version yet. He's on pre-order, but he hasn't made it. And here is the basic figure that we're reviewing today. Uh, it almost works scale-wise, but this guy is a little bit taller than he is, and it throws it off. And especially in proportions, this is much more slender. This is much bulkier. So it's probably not going to look too good on the shelf together. And just for fun, here he is with a Pursuit of Cobra snake eyes, and you can see that the heights are way, way out there. And here he is with his Arashi Kagi brethren, Storm Shadow. Now it's time to move over to this guy, and we're going to be having a look at the basic Storm Shadow figure. Uh, many of the same things that I said about snake eyes will apply to this guy. He does have quite a bit of impressive sculpting, so I do think that there's a lot of successful things to talk about here, but there's also some frustrations. Let's start with the sculpting. Uh, the sculpting looks really good all throughout the figure. I'm particularly impressed with like the kind of techie vest that they have. 
And I really like the kind of loincloth piece or skirt piece down here, and the boots are super nice. I actually love these little pouches on the belt through here, and I think they look great. It's almost like Batman's utility belt. I'll take the sheath off back here so you can see more of those techie bits and details. I really love this. Um, it is funny that it reminds me so much of some of the elements of uh, Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes costumes from, say, Retaliation. That kind of DNA and design work still appears to be there. So that's kind of funny. And the one place that I think that it's maybe not as sharp as I would like it to be is the head sculpt. It definitely looks a little soft, I think. Uh, it almost has kind of a, I don't know, there's, there's almost a slightly generic quality to it. And, uh, and this may be a strange thing to say, but it's almost as if the eyes are not quite right. Uh, they're almost a little, a little big, maybe a little exaggerated. I suppose it's almost kind of anime-ish in a way, uh, which is fine because I think that that would be cool to have like an anime version of these characters, especially like for a kid's line. So, uh, but yeah, something about the eyes probably isn't quite as detailed as the rest, but I do think that it looks all right. Now on camera, you're probably seeing quite a divide between this white and that white. Uh, in person, it's not that noticeable, but it is there. So you definitely have like a painted white and a plastic white over here. And anybody who's been in this game long enough knows how difficult it is for companies to get the whites to be consistent. Uh, the other element that we're going to be talking about is the paint. There's definitely more to talk about in terms of paint uh, than Snake Eyes. We have black going on down here with the white. We have black buckles and details. We have some gray all around the armor, which doesn't appear to be in the film. So that seems to be something from concept art. Uh, the Arashikage symbol looks a lot more subdued here. And that's good, I think. Uh, the snake Eyes, it was a little large. Uh, on the back, not very much going on. And we do have a gray paint hit right there at the mouth. And on the gloves, those are gray as well. So it's definitely more interesting than Snake Eyes was to look at. On the articulation, there's a lot that's the same. There's a few things that are a little different. He can look up a little more than Snake Eyes could, and he can't look down very much, but it's decent. He can, of course, turn his head all the way around if you so wish. You can, of course, get a shoulder hinge, and it doesn't appear to have as good a range, though, as the Snake Eyes shoulder hinge, so I'm not sure what that's about. He can go all the way around, of course. You can see at the elbow, we do have that single joint that goes just about 90 degrees. You can swivel it all the way around. There is nothing at the wrist here, so that's unfortunate. The waist does the exact same thing that Snake Eyes did with the action feature. Down here, we do have some hip articulation, but it's a little limited on going up by the belt, but not that much. It's still pretty decent. We can also do the splits, and thankfully that's not limited very much at all. Uh, we do have some pouches that are getting in the way of maybe him doing the splits quite as ferociously as his brethren. We can see that we do have a single joint at the knee. It does swivel all the way around, and there is nothing at the ankle. Uh, overall, I think the articulation is very effective for what they're trying to do. These swords come right out, and it's funny because these seem a little short. Uh, I don't know what it is, but the Snake Eyes swords seem quite a bit longer and maybe these are supposed to be that way in the film. And with his action feature, you can actually do this, and it works out really well, especially because he has two swords. It feels like there's more going on. So kids may enjoy this. With the other accessories, I feel like that he's more interesting than Snake Eyes was because he actually kind of has an alternate mode, if you will. And he comes with this, which is his sling of arrows. And I think these look really cool. And uh, you may recognize these because... It's the exact same accessory that the other Storm Shadow came with, the only one we've gotten so far in Classified. So that is very funny. It even includes this peg hole that is for this sword. Let's go ahead and see how that works. So we just put that on the back. And I'm curious if this peg hole will support this, his new scabbard. And yeah, they have kind of uh, cross-engineered it to make sure that it would work with this as well. So that's great. He's definitely more uh, kitted out with this. But if he's going to have a sling of arrows, he also needs to have his bow. So here it is. It's very, very basic, as you might imagine. Here he is holding it. Unfortunately, there is no loose arrow, and this is just hard plastic, so it's not like you can flex this and really get much action. Once you have everything on, uh, he does hold all of his accessories, unlike Snake Eyes, so that's another plus for this guy. So for a little bit of comparison, we do have the only classified Storm Shadow at the time of recording, 
which I'm sure is about to change. You can see that he is much more of a yellowy off-white, and we have much more of a pure white here. Uh, you can see, though, that the scales don't really work together. This definitely seems like a young teenager compared to the more adult-looking figure right here. And just for fun, here he is with the ultimate Storm Shadow, and um, they look interesting together, but their scales are way off. And here he is with Snake Eyes, which brings us full circle. I will say that having them together, I think they look pretty good. I think the scales are just about right and all of that. I'm not really sure which one is better. I think they both have different things going for them. I definitely think the more interesting suite of accessories goes to Storm Shadow, Whereas I do think Snake Eyes has some cool stuff going on. I think Snake Eyes tends to look a little more authentic because you're not seeing any actual human face. I don't know, there's there's almost a little a bit of generic quality to his face that kind of keeps him from uh, looking more like a premium item. But I do think that these guys look good and I am well satisfied with them as basic toys. Keep in mind they are only 10 bucks and they were both available on Amazon.com. That's how I got them. Overall, they're fine. I do not yet have the classified version, so I can't tell you if they're better, if you should wait, or whatever. I'm a hardcore G.I. Joe fan, so I thought these would just be interesting to share on the channel. They're not necessarily something that I think I would really go out of my way to try to collect a big bunch of, but I do think they would be really fun for younger fans. So. In terms of being a quality $10 kind of basic uh, item, I do think that these are pretty nice. Uh, I do suggest them for the right audience. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching the review today. If you enjoyed this video and feel that we deserve it, please give a like down below. I would really appreciate it. Of course, you'll need to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the new videos we have coming out. Of course, we will be discussing our thoughts on the Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins movie and talking about how it fits in with the legacy of the other G.I. Joe films. Guys, you all have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you later. God bless, take care, and wait.